hey, Elon Musk and SpaceX have been building Starship down at Starbase for the last few years. This is the fourth flight coming up, and it's possibly going to be happening in the next few weeks. There are some things that Elon and SpaceX has to do in order to make this flight successful. Flight one, two, and three were pretty successful in the whole grand scheme of things. They have to do basically the same thing as flight three. Clear the pad, hot staging. They have to do a boost back burn for the booster, and they have to possibly soft land the booster in the Gulf of Mexico. Now, Elon Musk just recently said that if flight four goes well, flight five, they're going to try to land the Starship's booster back at the Starbase launch facility. You have to be kind of skeptical about what Elon says. SpaceX is amazing, but you have to understand that some of the expectations that Elon sets are way high compared to the actuality of the situation. So if they do land, soft land the booster in the Gulf of Mexico, there's a possibility that Flight 5 could see them landing it on land at the launch facility at the tower. Think about that for a second. What could happen if this goes wrong? Boost back burn, lip maneuver, everything goes great for the booster. The ship is still flying through to orbit and doing its thing, which is a whole other conversation. But if the booster does make it back to a soft landing in the Gulf of Mexico, they're doing basically a virtual landing with the booster and the catch arms and the tower. So basically they have a landing spot in the Gulf of Mexico that they've partitioned off, so to say, that will be a tower and they'll go through the maneuvers of the booster hovering in the catch arms, not physically closing. There's no catch arms out there in the Gulf, but they will stay there for a certain amount of time. They'll hover down, slow hover down to the catch arms. And when the arms catch it, slowly release the engines, engine shut off. And then from there, the, the booster will fall into the Gulf of Mexico. And that would be fantastic. If they can do that in flight four, that would be fantastic. But think about it like this. What happens if flight four was an anomaly? What happens if flight four was just like, good luck? Like, it, of course, engineering is great. I love engineering. And I love the engineers at SpaceX. I know a few of them and they're great people. But what if this was one of those things that they just got everything right this time and maybe next time it's not so perfect. That's happened before with SpaceX. They've done this before. They've had numerous boosters land for Falcon 9 in a row and everything looked great. All of a sudden, a booster lands, tips over, blows up. And the same thing could happen with Starship's booster. Now, mind you, the fuel that would have been spent on the boost back burn and flying back and hovering would basically deplete most, if not all, of the fuel in the booster. So the booster itself, uh, not really explosive, not as much as, say, a Falcon 9. They also use different kind of fuels. The fuel in the booster for Starship is not as explosive or combustible as the Falcon 9. So Starship's booster, probably not going to explode if it does land on the catch arms and something happens to it. But mind you, the thing is made out of basically a tube of shrapnel. It's a 250 foot tall stainless steel tube full of electronics, full of motors, wiring, things like that. And you got to think what would happen if they did get it over land, if they got it over the tower and something were to happen to it. Shrapnel everywhere. And I'm, I don't like to say things like that. I don't want that to happen. What I want to happen is this thing to be completely successful on flight four. And then on flight five, I want them to land it perfectly at the catch arms, at the tower. Everything is great. But there is a possibility, a small possibility, that four is an anomaly and five works. Elon is happy with flight four and it landing in the Gulf and to go on to flight five and to land at the tower. I'm totally fine with that, but I don't see it happening for flight five. Elon said, if this happens in flight four too, by the way, he said that in the latest Starship, Starship talk, you can see it on the channel, go check it out. But if, I don't know, what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. I want to have a conversation about this because I don't, nobody really knows what's going to happen for flight four because nobody really, we know like the flight pattern. It's going to be similar to flight three. 
as far as we know. The only thing, a few things that are going to be different, but one of the major things is Elon wants to make sure that the Starship is at basically burn up temperature and land it in the Indian Ocean, possibly self-detonate it over the Indian Ocean. They do have a bunch of flights planned out and they do have combustion warnings over the Indian Ocean. So there's a possibility that they do land the Starship and that's the big one. That's the big one they want to do. The booster and landing in the Gulf of Mexico, also a big deal about this. So those two things are the huge deals for the next Starship flight. So if they can get Starship through the atmosphere so it doesn't burn up, they have to get it to an extreme temperature, the most extreme temperature the Starship has ever faced. And if they do that, this mission will be a success. If they don't do the boost back burn and the booster landing at the tower or at the imaginary tower in the Gulf of Mexico, I think that's going to be okay. But Elon says, of course, they want to do that. They want to make sure that it all works out. We'll see. I don't know. Let me know down below because I'm torn here. I don't think they should rush it. I think they should do five perfect flights of the booster. I know they only have up to nine flights every year for the Starship. So I guess they're going to go. They got to go for it, right? It seems like they just have to take some chances here. Now, I want to go back to the shrapnel part of it as well. The whole booster is stainless steel. The whole thing is super sharp. If you think about it, if something goes awry, something goes haywire and they explode the booster for some reason, shrapnel everywhere. There's pipes, there's tubes, there's wiring, there's harnesses, there's vehicles, whatever's around the Starship launch facility could get extremely damaged. Think about, just imagine a shrapnel piece this large ripping through part of the launch tower. I know they have cladding on it. I know they have protection on it, but some parts are not protected as well as others. So there's a possibility, even if it's a slim possibility, that some of the ground systems could get damaged if they try this on flight five. That's my real big concern is the ground systems at Starbase and how fast would they be able to rebuild them? They probably have other parts. It seems like they would have other parts there replacement parts, or they can ship them in or build them or whatever. But it seems like SpaceX may be taking this risk a little bit too lightly if Flight 4 is perfect. Again, let me know in the comments down below. I want to know what you think because I'm torn here. I would love this to work. I would love for the spectacle, the absolute spectacle of Flight 5 to land on the tower, catch arms, lower it down, refurbish the booster possibly and fly it again. That would be amazing. I don't think the flying again is going to happen, but if they catch it, they lower it down, that would be fantastic. I would love it. I would absolutely love that. And I think there's a possibility. I, but still, I need your comments. Please hit the like button too. And also, if you like this kind of content, hit the subscribe button, because not only will you get this channel and this kind of commentary, but you'll get other people's channels on YouTube, that'll be in your feed. YouTube will see that you like Spaceflight, SpaceX, NASA, and they're going to send you other creators that are doing similar content to mine for Spaceflight, NASA, and SpaceX. And then you're going to find new stuff, which is great. You're going to find other channels that you may be into. And what I get out of it, I get you here. You're part of the community. So please hit the subscribe button and the like button. Leave a comment down below. And also, you know what? Join the pod squad. Become a member of the channel. Help me out. Continue. Build this channel up. We're almost at 100,000 subscribers. Almost there. So please join the pod squad. Become a member of the channel so I can continue doing this every single week. Thank you very much. Take care of yourselves and each other. And I will see you in the next one.